America. My name is Armio Se Friend Pong, and I'm coming to you live. I usually do it every Friday, but this is a special Monday show because I was thinking this weekend about how to explain critical race theory, and I did a little bit on Friday, and I was thinking about graphics, and sometimes when I exercise, I, uh, I get some ideas, and I think the best way, or one of the better ways to explain critical race theory for people who are actually familiar with chess is to use chess, right? Because in chess, a lot of things appear to be one way, but uh, are not actually the case if you just if you don't take the context seriously. For example, we talked about on Friday that Brown versus Board of Education appeared to be like America waking up to the plight of the Negro and their degraded conditions. But, you know, there was also anti-communism and the CIA having to um, deal with countries in the developing world who were looking at the U.S. and the way the U.S. treats black people and they were looking at um, the uh, Russia and the way Russia treated black people and we're like, well, you know, maybe we'll go with the Russians. So anti-communism actually figured in to uh, the need to take the distasteful veneer off of, of, of U.S. democracy. Also, it'll also explain why once the wall went down, racial justice stopped being as urgent, depending on who you talk to. And there was a retrenchment. So... Uh, the formal methods of formal legalism and formal race theory will just look at the thing without looking at its context, right? They'll say that, like, well, you know, um, uh, real estate agents aren't promoting segregation because we banned that in the law. But since they didn't ban any of the incentive structures for real estate agents, they still do whatever the racist client wants them to do as a way to kind of ingratiate themselves into the racist client. So, yeah. So if you just kind of formally ban something but don't change any of the incentive uh, structures, incentives for the actors involved, and you admit that like white people get a kind of psychic or material benefit from racism, either makes them feel good or it pays, uh, I think both things are true, then you have to do more than just apply these kind of formal methods to actually get at what's sustaining a racial hierarchy in the United States. So how do you explain that using chess? Well, I have, I made a little chess board. Here you go. Boom. All right, so they say this is a chess board. You just walked into this game. You just walked into this game and you're like, you're black. You're like, you don't have great position. You don't have great position. It could easily be, you're probably going to lose just because your position's not. But I'm a decent chess player. I play, you know, a little bit better than the average chess player, but not as great as a great chess player. I can beat bad chess players, even if I'm black, regardless of the bad position here. All right. So I can be like, all right, so it's not the greatest position, but it's not, it's not, I can work with this. If I just sat down at this game, I could work with this. If I were, if I were black, I could beat like, you know, I could beat the white player, like maybe not half the time, but like a little bit less than half the time, even though my position's really bad. Uh, Cause I'm a, a, a decent chess player. Um, and now, and if I'm white and I walk into this game uh, if the black player is really good, they, if they're like a grandmaster or something like that, they'll be able to beat me, even though I have better position. Now, this is a story we tell America, American whites and blacks about uh, uh, race relations in America. It's that, well, you know, the position's not great, but if you're really good, you can beat them, and your team can win, and it's a fair game, even though uh, the position is not exactly equal. To which... Most people say, like, well, okay, not optimal, but we live in a non-optimal world. Let's play. But this is what critical race theory reveals the board to look like. Mind you, same board. Same board. Might have added a pawn by mistake. All right, same board. Same board. I just added some more pieces. Gave a little bit of context. I gave a little bit of context. You got, you got that. <laughs> totally different game though, right? Same board, totally different game. Now black is pretty much screwed. If I'm black, I can even be, I, I'll, like, um, uh, 
I could be a black grandmaster and still lose to white. Right? It's important because that was the same board. I just blew it up and gave context. Right? And this is what critical race theory does. It, it blows up the game and gives context. So you have to understand, things that are not necessarily related. You could say that this, this picture right here tells you everything you need to know and nothing outside of this would be relevant because we're just focusing on this. But then it turns out that the things outside of it are very relevant because the positions change and what's going on changes based on the context. What's going on changes based on the context. This, the same position, doesn't look as bad if you don't know all the context. This position looks bad, not necessarily as bad, not, not even as close as bad as this. This is fruitless. Oh, and so far as uh, this is fruitless. Oh, and so far as it's fruitful, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, you need to just throw off the game. Like, if you sat down on this game and someone just, like, subbed you in on this game, you'd say, like, no, this is a, this is a losing proposition. It doesn't matter. I could beat Kasparov if I'm white. Um, Kasparov's a famous chess player. It doesn't matter. I could beat anybody as white in this game, whereas the initial game seemed to be, like, somewhat, if not absolutely fair, at least close to being fair. Right, so critical race theory actually reveals all the other players in the game. You see those bishops hanging out? That's like the white conservative church and the, 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 and the other bishop is the white liberal church, which is just as feckless. Um, uh, but, you know, and if you don't have any content, if you're a church without content on racial justice, you might as well just be a conservative church because when you go for content, you're going to end up like supporting policies that inadvertently just support white supremacy anyway. And then all of a sudden you got the white queens there. Uh, came out of nowhere. Wasn't in the first picture. Wasn't in the first picture. But when you see what's really at play, well, it looks like, well, I, I don't know. It, it, it looks like they become very relevant now. Oh, yeah. And you can say, well, why, why, what happened to the black queens? Well, okay, well, feminism, right? So <laughs> that, was, that was a joke. A, kind of a joke. A little bit of a joke. Right? So, um... I, yeah, I took, I took the black queen off the board. And you could, a lot, I don't know, you know, I don't know. Um, Bobby Wright's got this great uh, line where he pretty much says that's what happened to the, uh, the civil rights movement. Like, uh, feminism and white feminism particularly got its hooks into it, and then that was a wrap. Uh, as soon as black women started seeing themselves as women first, or were paid to start seeing themselves as women first, like... It just became too easy to screw entire black communities. So, um, so what happened? So this is the whole board. Critical race theory shows you the context. Shows you the context of what you thought the race game in America was like. If you thought the race game in America was like this, you thought it was just you had uh, bad luck, you were um, an unfortunate position but still winnable at, at the team level, then um, that's part of the con. They want you to keep playing and not throw over the game because they know that the game is really this. You got a snapshot. Right? So what would you look... So, um, and so let's talk about this little black pawn. The little black pawn's playing like, look, all you have to do... I'm going to tell you a story with the little black pawn. Let me get... The little black pawn is saying... Let me, let me point to it. That pawn right there. That little black pawn is saying, like, look, all you have to do is bide me time. When I get to the other side, if you just give me, if you just bide a little bit of time, when I get to the other side, I'm going to become a queen. I'm going to hook everyone up. I'm going to wreck shop. I'm taking all these guys out. All you have to do is bide me some time. You don't have to give up a little, but just, like, just, just let me, let me, let me go. Once I get there, I'm going to put him in check. I'm going to put the king in check, and I'm going to screw up their whole game. Just... Bide me some time. And then what happens when you sacrifice your team for this little pawn? What will happen? You're like, okay, I'll bite him some time. I'll bite him some time. And then you lose all your players. And then what happens? Oh, what? How? But I... <laughs> I'm sorry. That A little too impressed with myself. Um, yeah, 
Because you know when you when you you get to become every sort of uh, you get to become any part any piece on the board you want when you, when you make it all the way. So what happens? You worked all that hard, and the black bond finally made it. And what they happen? They become Oprah. And they become Michelle Obama. They're like, ooh, ooh, it's tough to be you. <laughs> I'm going on the winning team. The other side looked like a lot of work. I don't know. I worked hard trying to get up this board. I tried, this is Candace Owens. I worked hard trying to get up this board. I'm not, I got one life. I'm not going to try to spend it on a losing team. So that's what happens. Uh, and just, uh, just to recap. So what happened was you, you, you were, you put together a plan to make sure that, of, that everybody, you make sure that everybody, uh, uh, that your one black pawn was going to become a queen. Because if that black pawn becomes a black queen, then maybe you can start making moves and pressure some kings and, 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 and do some, uh, 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 some real work. But instead, what happened was you sacrificed. And what happened? Boom. And that's, that's black life. So what do we do about that? I don't, I don't know. That's just been some bad luck. <laughs> some, I think that's, uh, that's some bad luck. Um, but very funny. So that's what, what, I, what I thought about this. <laughs> yeah, that black pond is Obama. That black pond was, was Obama. Black, like, yeah, that, that black pond really was Obama, either of them, Michelle or Barack. Michelle pretty much said, um, I've made it, so we all made it. Of uh, yeah, that black bond is like, come on, just just spend your one turn on getting me over there, and I will hook you guys up. It'll be a win for us all. And then what happened? Well, I got then I wanted my place in the Hamptons, but I want the Hamptons though. I want I want I want my I want my I want my book deal. So anyway, thank you for your time. If you like what I'm doing, and you should, because I'm trying to provide a service in a non-obvious way. If you like what I'm doing, go ahead and go to www funkyacademic.com and kick in five, fifteen, or fifty dollars a month to help me keep doing what I'm doing. Because, you know, I, I I put a lot of thought into trying to help the people. And uh, I try to give you guys a pretty good show in a way that kind of helps things. So critical race theory, it, it the target is formal theory that does not look at the context. It says uh, formal theory, you could do critical um, critical media theory, for example, will say like, all right, you can look at the script and you can look at the product, but you have to look at the fact that in order to get this movie made, they had to get the Pentagon to sign off on the script. You have to look at the fact that in order to make money on this movie, they have to make sure that the Chinese censors at the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, agree with, so they're not going to be any Chinese villains or anything like that, agree with the movie material so that way they'll make money in China, right? You saw that John Cena um, just went out and apologized to the Chinese Communist Party about calling Taiwan a country. Uh, so critical media theory will look at all of these things that aren't the movie that influence and actually become part of and influence and inform the movie, right? They'll look at the need for the Pentagon um, approval in order to use the Pentagon base. And that's, that's a whole thing. Um, I haven't done a show here, but I talked a little bit on Rising. They'll look at the need for... Uh, 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 you know, communist uh, CCP um, approval in order to make sure that the movie is going to be aired in China so that the U.S. studios makes a lot of money. So that's the way these other actors that are not the Hollywood studio influence the Hollywood studio. And so critical race theory came out of critical legal theory, which looked at the way all of these other institutions influenced the courts and how the courts are actually very, very vulnerable. They don't control budgets and they don't control guns. So they pretty much have to kind of ride along what bigger institutions say before people find out that they don't really have that much power. Right? So the courts will never actually like go that far in front of the people. So you got to work on the people. This is me kind of working on the people. Try to work on the people for the good of, for the good of my people. All right. And, uh, oh, like I said, look at a Brown versus Board of Education. But if you don't actually understand anti-communism at the time, you don't understand. You have a, you have a distorted notion of, you have a, this version. If you look at Brown versus Board of Education, you have this version 
of, oh, I'm sorry, not that. You have this version of the game because you don't know about anti-communism. You don't know about all the other things. You don't, you, you have a, you're fundamentally um, uh, distorted, right? So you can say that critical race theory kind of fills out the picture of how race actually works. The critical legal theory actually fills out the picture of how the legal regime actually works. And you can say, well, you know, and that's good, right? Because it actually, we're, we're, uh, we need to look at all of the factors for kind of developing a more robust understanding of truth. Because if you just have this picture of the game, you have a fundamentally distorted notion of your status in the game. You don't know that you're screwed. You don't know. If you have this notion of the game, well, then maybe you don't play this game. You say this whole game is, 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 a, is a problem, right? So they want to feed you this in your schools. They want to feed you, hold on. They want to feed you this in your schools when really America is set up like this. Right? And I, we just need to be honest about that this is the state of play. And no, winning is not like being the pawn who lived. A lot of people say black success will be like, well, even if the team loses, at least I won't get killed. That's not, that's not success, right? Yeah, that's not being in the game. The aspiration shouldn't be to become like, you know. This, this is not winning, right? So uh, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, uh, oh, one more thing. People say, like, well, we're, an we're, a, we're a country in construction. We're moving toward a more perfect union and a more perfect account of truth. Listen, here's the thing about construction zones. If America's a construction zone, construction zones are very dangerous for people without the right safety equipment, who haven't been given the right safety equipment. Construction zones are very dangerous. Um, and a lot of people get paid, and some people do get paid, for being unfinished, right? A lot of construction companies want to draw out the work. I don't know how, how many private contractors you've dealt with, but some of them want to draw out the work of being a more perfect, a more finished um, project because they like the bills. So a lot of people get paid off of America's unfinishedness in, their unfin in its unfinished business. Thank you for your time. Check out uh, www.funkyacademic.com. Kick in five, fifteen, or fifty dollars a month if you support what I'm doing, which you should. And I will see you on Friday. Bye.